Okay, so Orico have sent me another couple of storage devices. I've been sent a two and a half inch hard drive enclosure, uh, so basically one that you put a laptop drive in or an SSD. I've also been sent this, which I'm really interested in. So USB 3.2, 512 gigabyte USB stick, and it's actually USB-C as the connection. So I'm gonna try that with my Mac and see how I get on. I was really pleased with how fast this SSD was. Anyway, let's have a look on the Mac and see how fast that USB stick is. Okay, so inside the box we've got a strap and also the device, which is pretty solid. It's a really sort of quite heavy piece of metal. Uh, if I take off the lid, you can see that it is USB-C and only USB-C. Now, the only other drive I've got that's USB-C is this Arcanite one. So I thought it'd be interesting to give it a try together. Uh, so let's pop this one in first, the Arcanite one. So let's launch Blackmagic to test the speed of our drive and we need to select the drive. So select target drive. And this is the Arcanite drive and let's hit start. Starts off at 102, but it drops down quite quick because it works out what it can sustain. And it does go very slow on this bit. We've got to wait for the right drive to go all the way around. Uh, I'm gonna test this uh, USB-C stick, the Orico one, in a Raspberry Pi because I do loads of speed tests and I can compare it to some of the SSD drives, SD cards, various different things that I've tried out on. Okay, so 27.9 right. You can see the read is going a lot faster at 121. And just finishing now, so 123.4 read. So we can stop that because it just carries on and on. And eject it and pop the Orico drive in. Okay, so let's select the target drive, which is the Orico and open and hit start. So write speed's actually going up. Uh, so 271.1 and the read speed going nice and fast at 305.4. And if we have a look at the compliance at the bottom, you can see that a lot more things are supported. So much, much quicker, but what's that like in the real world? So I have a 3.6 gig file on my desktop and I'm gonna copy and paste that onto the Orico drive and see how long it takes. So into this drive, right click, and I'm gonna hit paste at the same time as I hit start. And we'll hear the noise when it's done. You can see it whizzing through, five seconds to go. And I'll look at the timer because it will play the noise when it's done. So about 12 and a half seconds, I would say. So let's try that with the Arcanite drive and hit paste and start at the same time. So remember it was 12 and a half seconds before and we're still way off. So it's coming to the end now. So two minutes and three versus 12 and a half seconds. So you can see if you're backing up large files, it's really good to have a lovely fast drive. Uh, but I wanna run an operating system from this. So I'm gonna pop this into my Mac and write Raspberry Pi OS and see how well that runs. So let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager, choose OS. And I always use the 32-bit version of this operating system for my speed test, just for consistency. There's the Orico drive. Let's hit write and yes. Okay, so that's all done, so I can eject it, uh, but I can't plug this directly into my Pi uh, as a drive because it's USB-C, so I'm gonna have to use one of these USB-C to A adapters. So that's what I'm using. I'm not sure if that will make a difference to the speed, uh, and it is dangling a bit because it's quite a heavy drive. Um, but uh, the Pi can use on the go, or has used on the go, uh, with early versions of Windows, but it's not really properly supported. So let's switch it on and boot USB 3. So no problems with installing all the updates and it's just rebooting now. Uh, so the drive is supported uh, and I'll talk about why I say that in a minute. So now with the new Raspberry Pi update, I can just press the Windows key, type in Diag and hit enter and it launches straight away. Definitely an improvement. So let's hit run tests. And I usually do this three times and take the best result. So there was no doubt it was going to pass. So let's show log and copy that information into a text document. In fact, let's do that as well. Yeah, this is way better. 
let's do that a second time so reset and run tests and the last one and work out which one looks the best so I generally go for the fastest random read speed so in this test it was 2290 this one here but you can see it's all pretty consistent results and how does that compare to other things I've tested so I've got a USB speed test video here so let's try that and I usually put the results in the description. Okay, so it's not as fast as the really quite expensive Corsair Flash Voyager, and I've never had that stick, but a uh, subscriber sent those results in. Uh, the Arcanite drive, it's better on the random write and the better on the read speed. This is the black Arcanite drive, which I use a lot just as a storage device. I really like it. It was pretty inexpensive and uh, it's pretty decent. So in here, there's an SSD. Uh, so you can see here, uh, oh, the SSD is much quicker, look, random write speed, random read speed, 16,633, yeah, so way, way faster on the random write speed and the random read speed, uh, and also the sequential, so an SSD is definitely better. Kingston Canvas Go, which is my favourite SD card, so better sequential write speed, not as good random write speed, but better random read speed. And the Samsung bar is, yeah, quite a lot better overall. So Samsung bar is one that I've, I've maintained as being a really good price for the device. But let's have a look at how much this Oroco drive is. Because for 512, for a reasonably fast drive, uh, it's all going to be about the price at the end of the day. Oh, when looking, I found the uh, SATA hard drive enclosure at £6.89, so that's pretty decent. Okay, so I found it on Amazon.com. Uh, so the 512 drive that I've got, $72.99. I think that's pretty reasonable for what it is. I wouldn't run an operating system from it, but it's great for backing up files. Now the two and a half inch drive that I've been sent is UASP and supports USB 3. And one of the things I really like about it is you don't need any tools to take it apart. If you just snap it, uh, it actually just slots apart uh, and you've got a little a uh, bit of foam here to stop the drive from moving about. Uh, but if I try it on the Pi, I've got history with uh, SATA drives. I've tested so many in the past. I like the way that fits in. Obviously, you could stick that on if, it, if you're going to use it on a regular basis. Line this up, and it just snaps in place. This connection is the same as you'd normally get on an external drive. Uh, it's able to supply more power uh, together with data from a USB 3 socket. So if I switch on my Pi with no media in it, it detects that there's no media. If I plug in the USB into USB 3, you'll see that it will recognize it and start to boot. But it gets stuck. You can see that it's saying no display. It wouldn't normally do that when I boot up KDE. Uh, so if I switch it off and plug it into USB 2 and try again, it boots up fine. And if I log in, and open a terminal and type in LSUSB, you can see that it says J Micron Technology Corp. And if we go to the browser, you can see I've got this video, USB boot fix SATA cable J Micron. And there's a command in that video. If you're getting this problem where it boots to black screen on USB 3, it's just that the Pi doesn't work well with J Micron. It's absolutely fine with external drives, but if you're using it as your boot drive, it doesn't like it, and there is something you have to change in command line.txt, but it's all in that video. Uh, if you want to see it, I'll put a link in the, in the description. What I can do, though, is use it for RetroPie. So on this 128 gig SD card, I've got RetroPie. Unplug this drive and snap it apart again. Take out the SSD that's already in there and pop in this 750 gig mechanical drive. The reason I use mechanical drives for RetroPie is they're fast enough, but they're much, much cheaper. I've got separate videos on that. Uh, I can plug it back into USB 3 now because I'm not booting from it. I'm booting from the SD card, but I've got about 500 gigs worth of ROMs on here. And here we have loads of games. So Arcade 1261, Atari 2600, 489, N64 145, PlayStation 1, 272. Let's have a look at that. Three, two. Bit of destruction, Derby 2. So thanks to Oroco for sending me these two devices. Much appreciated. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this helps. Please like, 
and subscribe.